Armaluk has been the subject of many Halo themed arguments over the years, possibly being the most controversial ability to come out of the entire Halo series, aside from sprinting, but that's another matter entirely. Today, we will answer two questions about armor lock. Is it overpowered and should it be banned? Armor lock is one of the seven armor abilities in the game and one of the five that is available to people at the beginning of every game by default. His properties stand out from his brethren of armor abilities. There are two versions of it. Before we go much further, I'd like to ask a favor. The YouTube algorithm recommends videos that gets good response and the information in this video is too important for people to miss. So I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Anyway, I... There are seven armor abilities in Halo Reach. There's Sprint, which allows you to move faster while you're using it. There is Jetpack, which allows you to go up. There is Active Camo, which allows you to go invisible, mostly. There's a little bit of a shimmer on you, and it also messes up the radar of everyone around. There is Drop Shield, which allows you to drop a large bubble shield that you can get the upper hand with, with melee weapons. And there's also Hologram, where you just project a form of yourself that just walks to where you were pointing. There's Evade, which is kind of like Sprint, only it gives you a big burst of motion and a tumbling animation. And then, finally, the elephant in the room, Armor Lock. As the subject of today's video, we will be covering Armor Lock. Now, Armor Lock is an armor ability that gives you complete invulnerability. Upon activation, the user does an animation where their fist slams into the ground and they stay in that kneeling position until it's done. While in this position, nothing can hurt the user, not even a sword swing or even a headshot snipe. When the user exits armor lock, it releases an EMP that functions just as a charged plasma pistol shot in every direction. Also, when you're in armor lock, if a vehicle tries to ram you, it'll be destroyed, and vehicles affected by EMP are affected as if it were a plasma pistol. Now, earlier I mentioned there's two versions of armor lock, but before I tell you the differences between the two, let me discuss why there's differences. Halo Reach released on September 14th of 2010, back in the day when everyone functioned off large amounts of Mountain Dew and Doritos. But pretty soon afterwards, only a short year, Halo transitioned from being managed by Bungie to being managed by 343 Industries. And around late August of 2011, we received a title update that made a lot of changes. Now, the title update was 343's changes to the Halo sandbox to make it fit Halo's agenda as far as 343 was concerned. Now, if you've played Halo MCC, you'll know there's game modes that are referred to as the TU modes. TU actually stands for the title update, so any TU game mode is just a game mode that has been tweaked with 343's changes. Now, there were a couple of changes, like the mitigation of Bloom, which Bloom normally would make you have to space your shots out by making each consecutive shot lose your accuracy. And the addition of bleed through, which is a Halo 3 mechanic, which means that damage exceeding that of your shield bleeds through to do additional damage to your health. The third thing was a complete revamp of Armor Lock. Armor Lock, originally in Bungie's version, had a couple of quirks. Now, Everything is the same, as I mentioned earlier, the EMP, the, the the animation and all that, but it lasted five seconds, and that was the maximum, and nothing could shorten that. And whenever you, you stuck somebody who would use armor lock, they could just pop into armor lock and either just shed the grenade or, depending on how the physics went, completely make the grenade disappear. Now, what 343 did was they changed it so you no longer shed those plasma grenades if you are stuck before you go into armor lock then the sticky grenade will still kill you as is shown in this clip and also while you're in armor lock if you receive any damage it just shortens the amount of time that you can stay in armor lock now these changes would lead to a much more balanced game and a lot less complaints about things like bloom and armor lock from people but enough of that now it's time to go to the... After looking at all those facts, I now have to answer the two questions that I mentioned earlier, whether or not it's overpowered and should be banned. Now, since there's two versions, I will judge the two independently of each other. 
starting with the TU armor lock. The TU armor lock, I would say, is not overpowered. It's balanced nicely with the rest of the sandbox, and while it can be annoying to fight against, the balance makes sense compared to the balance of other abilities and weapons. Thus, it should not be banned. Now for the big controversial one, pre-TU armor lock. I would say based on the slack of balancing, it's definitely very powerful. If it was maybe available in this form as a pickup on the map, I would say it's fair, as its usage is comparable to that of a power weapon. But as a default pickup, I would have to say it's unfair to those who do not choose it. Should it be banned? I would have to say also no. Look, I know it's comparable to a power weapon, but in team or 1v1 situations, it really didn't feel that overpowered. Most of the issue came from free-for-all game modes where, since everyone is all for themselves, one person using armor lock could really screw with the pace of a battle. So based on that, I would say that it shouldn't be banned game-wide, but I would say that the TU version of armor lock should be made available for free-for-all game modes online. Thank you guys for watching, and feel free to comment your own opinion on the matter. Tell me if you have any more information that might change a verdict, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!